What's up, y'all? This is back with another reaction, y'all, from the Fat Man's podcast. I got another reaction for y'all. But before we get in this reaction, y'all, please hit that like button and that subscribe button. I'm trying to hit 300 subscribers by the end of this month, so please do. We're at 249, I believe so. Let me double check. Yep, 249. So we need uh, uh, 51 more to go. So please go ahead and share this to your family, friends, and whoever you see out on the street. And what's getting this reaction, y'all? So the reaction name is, so I did Roland, Roland, Roland Martin, Goofy Boy. He's calling, he was calling, uh, uh 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 kanye aho because he said uh black lives matter that is a scam da, 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 that and everything so uh i guess tell me somebody told me on uh on the comment said that the tucker and kanye uh, uh kanye interview was good so i should i might as well check it out with y'all so uh the reaction name is kanye west exclusive rapper tales He's not a rapper anymore, but rapper tells uh, Tucker Carlson the story behind the White Lives Matter shirt. He's not a rapper anymore. He's a fashion designer now. You don't even. Come don't, Tucker Carlson. Does Kanye even rap anymore? Have, have y'all even heard, like? I know he posted an album like a couple years ago, but I think he's just more on fashion now. But I don't know. But let's get up in here, y'all, with Tucker, uh, Tucker Carlson. Since tonight, Kanye West, now known as Ye, is one of the best-selling musical artists in the world. He has also in recent years become a celebrated and very highly paid fashion designer. And of course, for a decade, he was well known to TV audiences as an in-law of the Kardashian family. But it's West's latest incarnation as a kind of Christian evangelist that brought us to his office in Los Angeles today for the interview you're about to see. Days ago, during Fashion Week in Paris, West, accompanied by his friend Candace Owens, unveiled a t-shirt that read simply, White Lives Matter. The response from the fashion industry and international media was instantaneous and uniform. Shock, horror, rage. There is- Hate, <laughs> hate, say hate. You ain't forgot about that, huh? There's no excuse for this, thundered the New York Times. West is legitimizing extremism, shrieked Rolling Stone, et cetera, et cetera. What was strikingly missing from the coverage, however, was any explanation for why West did this. What was the T-shirt? It ain't. It's not like it's saying uh, K K K K on there or something like that. The Ku Klux. Oh well, let me not say that because I might get. I might get that. Never mind. <laughs> Y'all know what I mean. Heard about. No one seemed to think to ask him, much less to listen to what he had to say. Instead, the enemies of his ideas dismissed West, as they have for years, as mentally ill. Too crazy to take seriously. Look away, ignore him. He's a mental patient. There's nothing to see here. But is West crazy? You can judge for yourself as you watch what we're about to show you. He has his own ideas, we can say that. Creative people tend to. That's why they're artists, not actuaries. His freeform social media posts give the impression of a man channeling his rawest emotions right onto Instagram. The effect can be jarring and it's often used as ammunition against him in the battle for influence over the minds of America's young people. And that battle is intense. But crazy? That was not our conclusion. In fact, we've rarely heard a man speak so honestly and so movingly about what he believes. But again, you can judge for yourself. Here it is. Why doesn't every home in the US have solar panels? The reason is not about sunlight or weather or even politics. I know, I know somebody caught, I know somebody uh, told me to do ad block and stuff right there. I'm going to do it, but for right now, I'm just going to keep the ads on there for right now. I know y'all don't like them, but for right now, we're just going to have to keep them like that. So you just came from Paris Fashion Week. You just landed, and yeah. you have a lanyard still on from it, and there's a photograph on it. What is that? It's a photograph of a baby's ultrasound. Why is that? And that you designed that? Yes. Why? What does that mean? Uh, it just represents life. I'm pro-life. Boy, so you wear it on a badge. Hey, I like that. I like that. What what kind of response do you get? And, and good, amen. I agree. I don't care about people's responses. I care about the fact that there's more black babies being aborted than born in New York City at this point. That 50% of black death in America is abortion. 
So I really don't care about people's responses. I, I perform for an audience of one, and that's God. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm starting to see why they want to make you be quiet. Um, how, when did you start to feel this way? When did you start to realize this? I, I really felt like, I think I started to really feel this need to express myself on another level when Trump was running for office and I liked him. Yes. And every single person in Hollywood, from my ex-wife to my mother-in-law to my manager at that time to, you know, my, my so-called friends slash handlers around me told me, like, if I said that I liked Trump, that my career would be over, that my life would be over. Uh, they said stuff like people get killed for wearing a hat like that. They threatened my life. They put my life. They basically said that I would be killed uh, for uh, wearing the hat. I had a, a, someone call me last night and said anybody wearing a White Lives Matter shirt is going to be greenlit, and that means that they're going to beat them up if they wear it. And I'm like, you know, okay, green light me then. <laughs> you know. That's crazy that somebody did that to him. I didn't mind, I didn't mind Kanye with liking Donald Trump. I don't, I mean, to be honest, I like Donald Trump myself. I mean, some shit he did say that was dumb. Come on, y'all. You can't, man, come on now. Y'all know some stuff he did, like the bleach thing. Come on now. Y'all know, come on now. But Donald Trump was cool. He, was, he wasn't a politician. He was a businessman. He was more focused on the money, peace, stuff like that. He was he was not no politician. He was more he was more of a businessman. His mindset is a businessman, not a politician. And I don't think I ain't, I don't think people really knew that. I, I I don't think people really knew that. That's why they couldn't control him in office. You know what I mean? Because he was a businessman. He was focused on business. You, you know what I mean? So, and I think that was the best thing. Instead of having a politician, that motherfucker lies too much. You know what I mean? But that's just my opinion on it. You know, God builds warriors in a different way. I don't know if it's because of me being a born in Atlanta and growing up on the south side of Chicago that, you know. See, I didn't know he was born in Atlanta. He made me for such a, such a time like this. It's like with David. You know, he tended to the sheep, but while he was out there, he had to fight all kinds of animals. So when it was time for Goliath to come, you thought because he was a sheep herder that he didn't have the skill set to take down Goliath. And the thing that I have is the position, I have my heart, but the number one thing is we have God on our side. And for the people, even if you don't believe in God, God believes in you. So you made reference to the White Lives Matter t-shirt mm -hmm. which you brought out at Paris. I told you I'm the closest one to God. No, I'm just playing, but yeah, he's definitely right. You know what I mean? Even though if you don't believe in God, I think God is with you. He, you know what I mean? I mean, and most of the stuff that people believe in is based on the Bible and what God said. So, I mean, even though you don't live, even though if you don't pray to God or you don't, but you definitely do live by God's rules. You know what I mean? It's fashion week. Like, shall not kill, stuff like that, shall not steal, stuff like that, like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Why, why did you do that, and what did it mean? You know, I did, I do certain things from a feeling. I like, I just, I just channel the energy. It just feels right. It's using a gut instinct, a connection with God, and just brilliance. You know, like, as if you ask, like, Tanya Harding how she did the, the triple flip or the triple spin, yeah. she was in so much practice that when it was time for her to skate in a, in a comp in competitive format, it just happened. Like, it happened outside of practice. It happened in the real format. And that's, what hap that's what's happening is God is, like, preparing us for the real, for the real battles. And we are, we are in a battle with the media. Like, the majority of the media has a, a godless agenda. And True. the jokes are not working. This whole, like, oh, yeah, he's crazy and all these things, they don't work. Because the media has, you know, they've also watched travesties happen, just even specifically to me, and just watch it and act like it wasn't happening. And they stay quiet about it. 
Uh, what are they? So, what have they well, I want to answer the, the white. Yeah. I, I feel like someone caught what I was saying, the comparison of Tanya Harden about the, the White Lives Matter. You know, my dad is an educated um, ex-Black Panther, and mm, I didn't know that. he put a text to me today. He said, White Lives Matter, ha, 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 ha. And I said, I thought the shirt was a funny shirt. I thought the idea of me wearing it was funny. And I said, Dad, what do you think it was funny? He said, just, just a black man stating the obvious. Yeah. <laughs> and people didn't take out the joke. You know what I mean, Kanye? You know, it's people are so sensitive now these days, man. You can't really say anything. You can't really wear anything now. Dude, you can step on so many shoes and people get so offended by it. Even if you don't even mean it, they'll shoot you right there and then. So it's like, bro, you, you touch one people, you touch one, um, uh, one car, you touch a man's car. He damn near about to fight you. Like, damn. You know what I mean? People don't have no, no, like, really, like, no empathy or no, no, um, I don't know. People don't know how to interact anymore. Especially because of the COVID stuff, two people were chopped in their house. So they got so used to being by themselves and stuff like that. Now people don't even want to go outside anymore and go to work anymore. Like, you know what I mean? Which I can understand, but like, damn. You know, my dad doesn't listen to rap music, and he's like super educated. We, we open up a water distribution center in the Dominican Republic together. He's like the original Steve Jobs, but he was getting blocked every which way with all of his ideas, and he didn't have uh, an endless bank account, and he didn't have an Instagram. So all these ideas, he had to like take them back and compress them. Like my dad is the most brilliant person that I know, and we actually have a strained relationship because I was taken from him because my mom was an actress, so she was a liberal. And mm. my dad would see certain things and say, you know, we should do it this way, we should do it that way. And the people got around my mom and pulled her away, much like, you know, Kim is a Christian, but she has people who want her to go to Interview Magazine and put her ass out while she's a 40-something-year-old multi-billionaire with four black children. And this is what, how fashion wants to, uh, how they want to present her. So I know you give these, um, you get these questions and I give you like these three-part answers. Is this a cool format for you? Yeah, I love you it. it. Okay, cool. And I am following it. All right. So you said um, that your father said when he saw the shirt, White Lives Matter, it's great to see a black man stating the obvious. So by which I think you meant... That's obvious. So that means he's more connected with his father, you know what I mean? Just like Jesse said, you know, you got to forgive your mother and you, you go back to your father, you know what I mean? So most of his, most of his logic, it feels like he bases his logic more off his dad or off his philosophy from his dad, which I have no power with. I think you should do that. You know what I mean? And obviously some stuff he probably disagreed with with his father and stuff like that. You know what I mean? There's nothing wrong with that, but I think most of his stuff is coming from his father. Basically true. Yeah, that my favorite response, because I kept on thinking like, you know, people, they're looking for an explanation and people say, well, as an artist, you don't have to give an explanation, but as a leader, you do. Yes, mm. I think that's right. So the answer to why I wrote White Lives Matter on a shirt is because they do. It's the obvious thing. Yeah. Why, why do you think that's so, and, and I assume the implication is, of course, all lives matter because they're lives, because God created them. Yeah. Why do you think that that would be considered controversial? TikTok made me do it. If you use TikTok, you might have seen videos like these recently claiming that the combination of L-tyrosine and B vitamins is like a natural Adderall. If you thought about... because the same people that have stripped us of our identity and labeled us as a, as a color have told us what it means to be black mm. and the vernacular that we're supposed to have. My dad grew up as a military brat and his family moved around, but they were based 
mostly in Delaware. And at the time, if, if he wasn't, if they weren't the only black family, they were one of the few. And he would be discriminated against because he was black. So by the time he got into college, he would be discriminated against. He went to a black college. He would be discriminated against because they said he talked too white. Yes. And then he played the kick drum in the band. So when he would go to the club and the music was playing, where would he clap his hands? Where the kick drum is. Yeah. So it was the opposite of where everyone else right, exactly. was clapping their hands. <laughs> and uh, this is the most elegant and tasteful person that I know. And when my mom, when they, when, when the school suggested like the herding systems, because what they do is take the, um, the black community and they separate us and they separate the families and the educated, uh, they, they, you know, they push this, you know, need for higher education and us as blacks, we discriminate against each other and say, well, I got my PhD and you don't have your PhD, so mm -hmm. I'm better than you. And that's so true. That's so true. So my mom, she had a PhD and she was influenced to uh, move to the south side of Chicago and take this job at Chicago State University. And she told my dad, if you come, if you come for us, you know, you'll never see him again. Because, you know, the media ridiculed me for getting the house next door to Kim to see my children. And they even said that I was stalking her and her new boyfriend because I bought the house next door to see my children. And yeah, I, that, that was crazy. I, to be honest, I thought the same thing until I thought about, like, his kids are there. She has the majority of the time. So when he could see his kids where he, they could just cross right, cross away from the street and don't have to go to no neighborhood or the neighborhood that they know their friends are over there. So I don't know. People, people, people got to think, people, people got to stop thinking so negative. You know what I mean? But, you know. That's, that's how I knew that, that, uh, that my mom had said that to him. I said, dad, you know, they moved us to, one of the most dangerous, agreed upon to be one of the most dangerous places in the world. It's almost like they tried to kill me or something. Uh, I said, Dad, why didn't you ever, why'd you never come to get us? And that's when he told me, that's when he told me that she was told that. You know, there's so many things that are put in Kim's head. You know, they bring influencers, like, no one ever knew where Corey Gamble came from. No one in the fashion world knows where Gabby came from. These people were practically made in a laboratory, in my opinion. And one of the things that they're really good at doing is being nice and being likable. And what they do is for people that have some form of influence, whether it's an educated black woman like my mother that became the head of the English department at Chicago State University, or whether it's the most influential uh, white woman on the planet, being my ex-wife, they have people that are around them at all times telling them what to be afraid of. It's like not what to do or say specifically, it's what to be afraid of. And if you have a person that isn't afraid of them, you know, like a Russell Brand or yeah. Candace Owens, or, right. it's not that we have to agree right. no. with this, but they're not afraid. They're not afraid to state what their opinion is. Yes. Everyone, no one is God, and everyone has an opinion. So a conversation like this is a window into a world that you don't see. So if you're familiar with West from the media, you think of him as an individual man. What you don't think about is that he is at the center of a battle, and people like him are at the center of a battle to get a message out. Mm -hmm mouthed by the lips of influencers like him and so many others, that extends a storyline on behalf of, well, in this case, the status quo. So there are a lot of people vying to make certain that people like him say the right things. And the consequences for not doing that are very severe. So for him to come out and say all lives matter, obviously, is a huge threat to a lot of people. Who are mm. those people exactly? Well, we asked him, and he told us. That's next. Subscribe. To wow, I like that.
I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do the part. I'm gonna do a. Oh shoot! I'm gonna do the part. Um. Hold on, y'all. I just want to see other the other video. Hold on. I'm oh, sorry, y'all. I just want to see if uh, the other part. Kanye was Kanye, Kanye, Kanye. And they post like damn near like a hundred, a hundred, a hundred shows. Well, all right, yeah, that's the end of the video. Yeah. I'll, I'll just, I'll, I'll find it here in a minute. That's the end of the video, y'all. What did y'all think? I totally agree with uh, Kanye West. You know what I mean? People hate him for so much, but like, I didn't, I didn't, I wasn't sticking there when he had the shirt on. I thought it was funny to be honest. You know what I mean? I think, yeah, they, they do matter. Black lives matter. All lives matter. You know what I mean? God created us. You know what I mean? Put us on this earth. You know what I mean? And there's no, obviously God, I'll be God, we're God's children, so that means we all matter to him. But hey, y'all, that's the end of the video. Y'all please hit that like button and subscribe button. I'm trying to hit 300 subscribers by the end of this month. But in this month, Good evening at, and welcome to- We're at 249 subscribers, so we need 51 more to go. Y'all, please go ahead and subscribe, share with your family, friends, whoever you see. And I'm going to ask y'all, is Tucker Carlson a, a conservative? I think he's more on the conservative side. But y'all tell me if we're more Democrat or not. But hey, y'all, Osiris is out from the Fat Man's podcast. And I will see you guys on our next one. Peace out.